Hello, my name is Kalima Salahuddin. I am a board member with the Jefferson Union High School District. I am on the San Mateo County COVID Recovery Council. I'm on the board of the Housing Leadership Council of San Mateo County. And I'm also a member of a newly formed organization called the REACH Coalition, which I'll speak to more in this thread talk. Um, I wanna thank Sam Cita for asking me to do a thread talk. Um, I have been really involved in equity, um, originally just in education and work within my district and in the work with other districts in the county as a whole. But now really looking at equity um, in the county, in and out of education, and seeing what we can do to be more equitable in the services that we provide and make sure that all of our constituents are getting the access to the resources that they need in the way that they can receive them best. Um, so the journey for equity for me, again, started in education and really looking at our outcomes and our, uh, our opportunity and achievement gaps and why they were so tied to certain factors. Um, of course, outside influences have, you know, have a part to play in educational outcomes, but that still didn't really explain how so much of it was tied to your race or your socioeconomic outcomes or certain factors. Um, in your household. And then really taking a deep dive, um, really uncovering um, the role that education um, played in holding up systemic inequities. Um, that's not to say that public education is bad. I love public education. Um, I think they do amazing work. Um, I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be sitting here without the public education in so many hands from teachers, counselors, staff. But at the same time, um, acknowledging where there's flaws doesn't diminish all the amazing work that's being done. It's like, how do we become better? And really taking a hard look at how the system of education, um, no one is falling through the cracks. The system is operating how it's been designed and it's been designed to create and perpetuate inequity. And we just have to be honest about that so that we can disrupt those systems and create better outcomes for our students. And so taking those lessons and bringing them to a county level and the essential question that I carry around with me that I was given to, that was given to me by um, one of my mentors, Nicole Anderson, is really looking at um, can the system that helped create and sustain systemic inequity be used to then solve that same inequity to 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 close those uh gaps and the answer is i hope so <laughs> i don't know yet but i really hope so i'm still trying to hold on to faith that yes yes they can but one of the things that we have to do as com uh, as community leaders in the county and one of the reasons why i agreed to do this thread talk is that we have to be disruptors of that system. We have to acknowledge, first acknowledge the role that we play in holding up the systemic inequities in our county, and then really having the courage to disrupt those systems and bring about real change. And that's hard. There's nothing harder than uh, disrupting a system. People like things the way they are. No one likes change, um, especially change that is so uh, built into who we are as a county, you know, how we got here through the history of redlining. And um, if you don't know about redlining, please, please look it up. There's so much information out. Redlining as a whole in the United States, but there's a lot of information on the Bay Area and even the county and how we created these huge gaps in housing and um, um, value of our homes, depending on who lived in those communities and denying access to people of color to certain communities. and um, communities of color who were, were segregated and their homes were, were worth less than um, non-communities of color. Um, and now we've tied our education funding to your value of your home. So if you can't get access to those communities um, and access to the better schools that are better funded than generational wealth, it's just an ongoing cycle. And so right now with COVID-19, it's really highlighted uh, how far those gaps are between those without resources and those with resources. 
and has really challenged us all. I mean, I don't know of any of us in who run the various municipalities in our county know how to service our constituents who don't come to us with a core set of basic needs that are already met. And we have to get better at that um, because we are part of the reason why they come to us without those core set of basic needs met. Um, so my challenge to my fellow leaders is to ask about questions and always look for the data. Who is in the room when we're making the decisions? Who has access to us? Having access to, you know, elected officials and other leaders of other organizations is, you know, comes with some privilege um, and is part of privilege. Um, having the time, knowing how to navigate the system. Um, so when we make our decisions based on who we are hearing from, I always try to think about who haven't I heard from? Am I hearing from all of my constituents? Who haven't I talked to? And really do the work to meet them where they are and go to where they are and talk to them. Who is in the room when we're making a decision? Do the people that are in the room make, when we're making a decision look like the community? And more importantly, if we're trying to service a specific need, do the people in the, are there somebody in the room that's reflective of that need? Um, too many times there are people who don't have the lived experience and so don't even know the questions that they're not asking or don't even know like to ask the questions or to see where we have the gaps are making decisions. And we have to be more inclusive, especially when we have a leadership here in the county that does not look like the constituents of the county. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why Reach Coalition was formed. Um, it is a group of elected officials of color from all over San Mateo County that are really looking at various systems and what we can do to, to close those gaps, create bridges, and more importantly, take action with policy change and with funding so that we can um, ensure that when we say we're doing things in a way that's equitable or creating equity, that that's true. And it's not, equity isn't just a new word that we toss out all the time, but it really doesn't have any meaning behind it. If you don't have some policy change, it's bigger than a resolution. It's bigger than just telling me that my life matters. Show me through some action that's being taken. Show me through policy change. Show me through your budget and what you're doing to make changes in your budget so that your budget is actually an equitable document and not just a document where resources are equally given. Um, we have to really look at um, what are we doing to cause some of the inequity, like housing zoning laws. For me as an educational system, what we teach, how we teach. If you look in the library, are my students reflected? There's so many different ways that we are holding up these systems and we, we constantly have to be challenging ourselves um, in order to say that we're truly being um, of service to all of our constituents in our, in our communities. Um, we have to be okay with being uncomfortable. This is really hard work. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm in a room, I find that the burden on saying these things and talking about these issues falls on me. And um, that's, that's tiring. And also they can see me coming. <laughs> Here she goes. Uh, we know what she's talking about. So I'm looking for some real allies to help me. And not just when it is election time, because, you know, anytime people are up for election, they always want to talk to me about equity. But what are you doing in between the times when we're going to the ballot? And what are you showing me through the policy work that you've done in your current elected uh, position or um, what you've done before you've run for your elected position to show me that this is always something that's on the forefront of your mind and not just something that when it's convenient for you. I want to live in a community where all our constituents are valued. And right now, it's hard for me to believe that when I'm looking at the infection rates of COVID-19 and, and you know, it's overwhelmingly people of color really calling out our Latinx community but I hardly hear that talked about. It's and, and I don't understand how come that is not 
at the forefront of every conversation and that time isn't dedicated to that at every t- every meeting where we're talking about COVID-19 so that we can disrupt that. And then when we get on the other side of this pandemic, the brunt of having to deal with the fallout wasn't housed in just one community. And so, you know, it's bigger than just a few of us speaking up. We all have to collectively uh, lift our entire community up and show that we value the lives of everyone um, in our community and not just the ones that come with us with the basic needs where they can get through this on their own. So I'm looking forward to uh, the ongoing conversation and for the action that follows. Um, Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this talk. And um, my children live here. I want my children to continue to live in San Mateo County. And I want them to truly believe that this county is reflective of them, sees them, and values their lives as much as it values everyone else's. Thank you.